like me, you're a sucker for details. And the 928 has details in spades. I mean, this thing is a crazy looking design, even by today's standards. That rear greenhouse, those headlights, everything about this car is pretty unique and it has really grown on me over the years. One thing that's undeniable about the 928 is that amazing headlight design. I could have made a video of 15 minutes of just the headlights on this car and honestly, I would have watched it. When I think of the 928, I think of bold design language and bold is what Porsche should be all about. The era that brought us the 928 was an era of pretty interesting designs. Now a lot of these cars never made it to manufacture. Everything was getting turned on its head. Mid-engine cars were de rigueur and Porsche knew they needed to change the weight bias and also the cultural norm of what people thought a Porsche was. Now as hard as this is to believe in the era of skyrocketing air-cooled values, I mean Come on, who hasn't been watching Bring a Trailer and watching these 964s and 993s going through the roof? But with road tests somewhat bemoaning the rear bias of the cars, Ralph Nader's book, Unsafe at Any Speed, was not helping things. Porsche started thinking, should we move the position of the engine? And from that, the 928 and the transaxle era was born. For me, the 5 liter V8 is really the pick of the litter. The later GTSs with the 5.4 liter make a little bit more horsepower, but let's be honest, we're talking about a little bit under 350 horsepower for the most powerful 928s. The S4 was available with a 4 speed automatic or a 5 speed dogleg manual transmission. Now, which one do you pick? Each one has its pros and cons. Now, the 928 GT, which is a slightly more powerful, hotted up version of the S4 that was prior to the GTS, is also a pretty amazing car and is also one of those cars that is still way undervalued compared to what the car costs new. Innovations which brought passive rear wheel steering, like the Wysoch axle, which actually is really hard to say. This is like take number 156 of saying that word. But it brought with it a lot of innovation. It was front engine transaxle. So you had this 50-50 weight distribution and a thumping V8 that actually shared its geometry with more American V8s than really what was going on in European design at the time. The design of the interior on this 928, definitely a thing of beauty. Definitely classifies as a Tim's Enthusiast Garage thing of beauty. There's lots of leather. Everything was sort of well thought out. The instrument binnacle goes up and down with the wheel, which I'm not sure if it's the only car that ever had that at that time, but it seemed like the first or one of the first cars to do that. And to me, it really added to the drama. The layout is more sports car than family car or GT Cruiser. And I think it's one of the reasons why people are so torn on whether the one to have is a manual or an automatic, because it's a pretty great sports car. Let there be no doubt, I'm a huge fan of a sunroof. I just think it really adds something special to a car. But modern sunroofs are so far back, the sun is behind you. You can't see any sun. And one of the perfect things about a 911, and they got it totally right on a 928, is the sunroof's in the right location. When I'm driving this car, the sun is right there. The sky, the clouds, it's, it's almost like being in a topless car. And really that's the point, and I think modern cars miss that a lot of times. Now possibly that's because of safety legislation, but let's be honest, we're car freaks. Who cares about the safety? So while clearly the 928 did not replace the 911, a car eventually did replace the air-cooled 911, and that's the 996. Think about it. It shares a lot with this car. But one thing that is significantly better on this car than on the 996 is the column stock quality. Why, Porsche? Why? One thing I'd say is that the 996 weighs significantly less. It's like under 3,000 pounds. This, the S4 and the GTS is like 35, they're pushing, you know, 3,500 plus, maybe just under. But even the lightest 928 is 3,200 pounds. So I think in terms of like, if you look at the backlight on the 996, you look at the backlight on the 928, there's a ton of similarities there. The size of the cars, the shape of the cars, it's a very similar car. I think in a lot of ways the 928 
taught Porsche what they needed to do to replace the 911. And they carried that knowledge over to the 996. And I think that's what made the 996 such a stellar car. One of the principal foibles of the 928 is that it's a really complex car. There's a lot of wiring, everything's electrical, everything has a motor on it. And sadly, I can report that from all my 928 ownership, I have experienced almost everything breaking on a 928. Most of it's pretty easily fixable, but one of the things that's been broken on multiple 928s that I've owned is the glorious rear hatch release located right here. This one works, or does it? And surprise, in this 928, everything works. And that's not too rare because you know what? A lot of people have taken pride in their 928s over the last few years. So a lot of the cars that are available now are the pick of the litter. They're cars that have had the service. They haven't skimped on it. But one other thing I want to talk about while we're back there is it is not a four-seater. No one is sitting back here. Okay, okay. An adult could sit in the back if they either had no head or no legs. Buying a 928, you definitely want to take inventory of what's going on in the interior. Interior bits are pretty expensive. I've seen a lot of people spend tons and tons of money restoring the interior on these. So finding one that is beautifully original, that's had the leather condition, that's been garaged, and one that's been kept out of the sun, is the kind of 928 you're really looking for. Porsche actually built a car called the 942, which is a stretched, long wheelbase 928 for Ferdinand Piac, and I got to see it at the museum. The car actually really had me thinking, what an amazing GT car the 928 was. And I thought, you know what, the automatic does really suit this car. So is the automatic a great choice? Automatics are still, I wouldn't say a fraction of, but a half to you know, significantly less than a manual transmission car. I'm thinking to myself, you know, this is the car that they envisioned replacing the 911. It never did that. They sort of thought, okay, we'll sell it alongside as a GT, larger, more family version of the 911. It really wasn't ever that. It definitely is a pure GT car. It definitely is a beautiful car. And I think the design language developed with this car carried over a lot into the 996. 996 is a car that's just as misunderstood as this car is. The 928 has been in the dump in terms of values for a solid decade now. And we're starting to see them creep up and this is really kind of the end of where deals are available in the land of 928s. And so if you want to put a 928 in your garage, especially like an S or an S4 or even a GT, you need to do it right now. GTSs have already gone through the roof. It's been a solid six or seven years since GTSs have really been collector's cars. And it's no wonder. On the S4 and GT cars, there's really only about 16,000. Well, according to Porsche, only about 15% of these cars have manual transmissions. The 928 is arguably the greatest of the transaxle cars. And, you know, since there's only about 15% of these cars, according to Porsche, that have manual transmissions, it really got me thinking, is the automatic the right choice for this car? That's a seriously good question. Now I've owned S, S4, GT, and GTS, so I have a pretty good idea of what each car is like. Its automatics are still, I wouldn't say a fraction of, but a half to you know, significantly less than a manual transmission car in similar shape, so it's something that definitely is worth considering. So let's take a ride in this automatic transmission, Porsche 928 S4. Porsche did a lot of heavy development on the 928. It was a new V8 engine, it was a new concept. It was a GT, it was a sports car, it was something that would take the 911 to the next level. Now it is a GT in concept, but one thing I'll say, and as you can maybe hear as we go over these very minor bumps, is suspension tuning is pretty serious. This car is set up more for sport than for leisure. So the real question is with 928s, which transmission do you want? As we said earlier, only about 15% of these cars, thereabouts, came with a manual transmission. So there's a lot of options on the automatic side. And since it's a GT, you know, is the automatic the right choice? I think an automatic could be the right choice, but you have to think, this transmission is shared, uh, it's a Mercedes transmission. 
And if you've watched some of the other videos, I also have an SL500. And for whatever reason, it, there's that sport suspension. For whatever reason, it responds a lot more naturally in the 500 SL. In this car, it feels a tad dim-witted. Everything in the 928 is power, including the sunroof. Everything works just like on a modern car. And when everything's all closed up, it's a pretty quiet car inside. I wouldn't go so far as to say it's costening, but it's definitely on the softer edge of what a 911 would be, especially now. Now the 996 in an interesting way is really the car that I think, you know, obviously it's the car that did replace the 911. In driving this back to back with the 996, the 996 owes at least as much to the 928 as it does to the original 911. I think in a lot of ways they combined both of those cars into one car that does everything that the Porsche brand represents. And that's kind of where the 911 is now. With the 991, it's a much bigger car. It's sort of a GT car, but it still has those back road Nürburgring uh, inspired handling that really sets it apart from almost everything else. fall evening like this, there's not much better than a 928. The scent of fire in the air, the pine trees whizzing by, the exhilaration of the power from this V8. I mean, it's a car that everyone would love. And I have to say that the more I drive it, the more the automatic makes sense. Having owned a GTS and a GT and a regular S4 with a manual transmission, I mean, I think the manual transmission is worth a little bit of extra outlay. But does it fit the GT moniker? I don't know, I think so. Again, the suspension tuning on this car is much closer to sports car than true GT car. I mean, it rides significantly firmer than an Aston Martin of the period or even an Aston Martin of today. It's very firm and it's side to side progress in corners or even fast sweepers are very controlled. So, I mean, it's much more of a sports car but I think, sure, the Automatic is a great car, and if you can find an S or an S4 for a great buy, add one to your collection, but never stop looking for that manual, because I think there's an extra spark there that the 928 deserves. You know, the transaxle cars have long been the forgotten Porsches, and I think they're some of the best Porsches. The 944 Turbo, the 928 S4 and GTS, are phenomenal cars. And now in an age where Porsche is making Panameras and Cayennes and Macans and all these other cars, I think these cars really have the spirit of true sports cars and some real diversity, whereas the 911 is just a 911. As you can hear, you can keep it in a gear. And that's important for cornering. And this car will go around corners. And it is pretty lively. And the weight transfer is super predictable, which is exactly what you want from a sports car. And the pitch in, because it's a 50-50, nearly 50-50 weight distribution, is, is beautiful. The car pitches in nicely, it holds its line, and it's one of those things where it's you can balance it right on the edge of oversteer, and it's pretty fantastic. On a night like tonight, with the roof open, back roads, and you're just taking it all in, it's a classic performance car with a V8. And I don't know how much more car you can get. Interesting design, collectible, beautiful, that's gonna give you everything that this car can give you for the low amount of investment. So the 928 definitely represents 
an interesting chapter in Porsche's history. And I think it's a car that is well deserved to be in a collection. And if you're looking for a car that does a lot of things really well, it is a GT, yet more on the sports car side of things, the 928 fits that bill. They'll never be as cheap as they are right now. If you've always liked the 928, now's the time to grab one. It's a great alternative to a 911. Way worse than Mark IV. The column stocks in the 996, it's like total rubber, just horrible plasticness. Are you recording this? No, oh, this is perfect. That's what it should be anyway. So if you enjoyed this episode of Tim's Enthusiast Garage, you can head over to timsenthusiastgarage.com and grab a t-shirt or a poster of your favorite car from the season or even this amazing design by my friend Andrew of the 928 in the future. It's a future collectible. And it kind of combines my love of sci-fi and cars. There's also a season one poster with kind of a vintage design that I'm hoping you'll like. I'll also be offering this design in a t-shirt in the very near future. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.